All right, this is your support video for chapter 12, day four. Chapter 12 is about linear regression. It's our final test that we run. If you recall, A is the y-intercept and B is the slope. Small b, lowercase b, would be the sample slope from data, while cursive b, capital B, would be the actual slope or the actual relationship which is what slope is between two variables, okay? So let me read the problem to you. Do customers who stay longer at buffets give larger tips? Let's hope. Tiffany, an AP stat student who worked at an Asian buffet, this is actual data that she gave me a long time ago, decided to investigate this question for her second semester project. While she was doing her job as a hostess, she obtained a random sample of receipts, which included the length of time in minutes the party was at the restaurant and the amount of tip in dollars. Does the, do these data provide convincing evidence that the customers who stay longer give larger tips? Let's look at it. So we got one group that stayed about an hour and a half, or I guess hour and a half is 90 minutes, so almost two hours here, 100 minutes. Some groups stay shorter. It looks like there's a general positive trend there, so it looks like it might be fairly linear. Is there, is there evidence of that? Question A is just a real mild question. Here is the scatter plot of the data with the least squares regression line added. And you should know what least squares means from chapter three. But just to remind you, this line was developed to minimize the sum of all of those squared residuals for each point. And a residual is the gap between what actually happened and what was predicted to happen which is the actual thing happened is y and the coordinate x, y, and the predicted thing happened is y hat. So y minus y hat, or the vertical distance, if you square all of those and sum them up, this line is the, the line that makes that sum of the squared residuals the least, okay? All right. Describe what this graph tells you about the relationship between the two variables. And I put weak, you know, it's not super strong, but there's, but there's a definitely a positive linear relationship between the length of time and the amount of tip. But it's not super linear. Okay, now, it's really common in testing formats for them to produce a table that looks like an old mini tab table, but most the software companies produce data that's similar. So I'm gonna slide this up so you can see that. Okay, so here is the, here's the table. Now, the stuff that we're gonna be concerned about, I'm gonna highlight, okay? So we will, we're gonna be dealing with these numbers and these numbers, and probably all the way through here. We are not gonna be dealing with the T-score and the P-value and the standard error of the coefficients for the um, Y-intercept, only for the slope, okay? And what we're wondering is, is this slope significantly different from zero? Because zero represents that there's no relationship. We're gonna to get to that in a minute. By the way, this is really easy on this table. How did you get a T-score like this? How did they get that? So let's talk about that real quick, okay? How do you get a T-score of 1.23? You simply divide 0 0.03013 divided by 0 0.02448, that'll be that. Now this conversion right here is, is going to be done by, um, using um, TCDF, okay? So this is TCDF, okay? And this is gonna be a T-score of uh, 1.23 comma infinity. And the degrees of freedom on this is actually gonna be 10. The reason it's 10 is because um, there are 12 points on this, and in linear regression, you take 12, the, the n, and you subtract 2, because any two points make a line. 12 minus 2 is 10, so the degrees of freedom is 10 in this case. And then that's how you're going to get that. 
And note that this particular p-value is always for a two-sided situation. This is always a two-sided number. And most things are two-sided in this particular type of prompt. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of background on that. Okay, so we got the residuals. So this is a picture of all the residuals that I kind of pointed out earlier. There are many positive residuals and there are many negative residuals. And by the way, the residuals for the least squares line, the sum of them is always one, okay? And then this is the z-score of the residuals, okay? The z-score of the residuals. And if we know, we know from, we know from uh, learning the uh, empirical rule that about 68% of the z-score should be within one standard deviation of the mean. And we have a very small sample size. But does that look like about two-thirds of them? Sure. It's only 12. Okay. About 95% should be within two standard deviations of the mean. And they're all there. So this is not surprising. So the z-scores are definitely look like they're roughly normally distributed. And the z-scores look like they're balanced on each side of the line. This is going to come into play when we get to our requirements for the linear regression t-test. So I'm just kind of setting all of this up, okay? All right, now, um, the next question asks a real simple one. What is the equation of the least squares line for predicting the amount of the tip from the length of the stay? This is real easy to pick off of here. This is A and this is B. So Y hat, which you're probably writing out as Y hat. Y hat is... 4.535, meaning $4.54, plus about $0.03 cents for every minute that you spend. That's what's going on here, okay? And then I've labeled X and Y. X is time spent in minutes, and Y is the predicted tip in dollars. No problem. So they may ask you that. Question C asks, and I'm going to slide this up, to interpret the slope and the Y-intercept. I started to do that earlier, okay? So the slope is right here, and this is about three cents. So the key thing in interpreting slope and y-intercept is the word for every. For every minute spent in the restaurant, x is minutes, the predicted tip amount will increase by about three cents, or $0.03, okay? And the y-intercept is probably not realistic. It's almost like the base tip about $4.54, like the base tip. What it literally means is, if you spent no time in the restaurant, zero, the predicted tip amount would be $4.54. I guess that's possible, because maybe people go to a buffet and do takeout. Maybe they fill it all up one time and then they leave. And then maybe they give a tip of about $4.54 on average. So I guess it's actually somewhat realistic. Okay, now, let's go ahead and carry out this test, okay? The test, for the most part, will not involve you to do any calculator work. It's already done for you. It involves just reading a sheet. And this is how they almost always uh, test on these, assess these. Okay. All right, HOHA. We're not using mu. We're not using pi or p. This is not a proportion test. It's not a mean test. It's not a chi-square test with just words. It's a test for slope. We're wondering if that slope of three cents is significantly different than nothing, than zero, okay? So, HO, B is zero, and it means there is no association between time spent in the restaurant and tip amount. And then HA, B is not zero, two-sided. There is an association between time spent in the restaurant and tip amount. And I'm gonna do alpha of 05 just to pick that, okay? Now, my conditions, uh, the acronym for this that I've chosen for my classes is the word linear, okay? And L stands for, does the relationship look linear? And we said earlier, yeah, it does. I stands for independence. We're assuming all the data points are independent. All those tips are independent from the different groups that Tiffany collected. The N, are the residuals normally distributed? I showed you that earlier. We're about 68% of the residuals were within one standard deviation of the line, and then 95%, in this case, all 12, were within two standard deviations. So the, the residuals are roughly normal, 
And then I showed you on the other chart that there was an equal standard deviation around that line. That line had them balanced top and bottom. And then I'm assuming the data was from a random experiment or Tiffany got them randomly, okay? Now, all you really have to do on this is you just have to read the chart. So let me look at the chart real quick, okay? And the chart's p-value on this, as you can see, was 0 0.247, 0 0.247. So all you're doing is reading this. You're doing no calculations. You're reading that, and then you're making a comment on it, okay? So let me slide back down here. Okay, so the p-value was 0.247. So we can simply say with using that off the chart that we will fail to reject HO because the p-value is greater than alpha. We have insufficient evidence to suggest that there is a relationship between time spent at the restaurant and the tip amount, which I'm sure is very frustrating to hear for those of you that are in the service industry, okay? All right, now you can also do this problem with a confidence interval, okay? And a confidence interval goes something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and circle the confidence interval. All this has been done here, okay? for you. All right, so the confidence interval is the sample slope, which is 0.03, right around there, plus or minus T star. Now, I'm gonna do a, uh, I guess I went with a 90% interval, I suppose, okay? 90% interval, for, in this case, for whatever reason. And if you look up 90% at degrees of freedom 10, you're gonna get a um, 1.812 is going to be the T star number. And then you're going to multiply that by the given standard error from the chart. Okay? And then if you do this by hand, there is no calculator function for this. You're going to get this. That negative and that positive means that zero is in the interval. So you could say that fail to reject HO because zero is in the interval we have insufficient evidence to conclude that there is an association between time spent and tip amount because it's very possible that zero is the, is the number that's actually there or some number close to zero. I mean, let's face it, 0 0.03 is pretty close to zero. Okay, okay, that is day four of chapter 12. Good luck.